Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another fresh box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 98, and the name is Escape. So, uh, Hal, do you think you could open the pot bay doors for Dave, please? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. This is a blue illuminated motion USB-C cable. It's pretty cool. This is what it looks like when it's plugged in. But don't be like this person and drive folks crazy on a long flight if you can help it. These are some alligator clip jumper leads. This is the Seed Studio Zhao RP2040. This will be the brains for our HAL project. This is the ESP32 S2 Mini Wi-Fi module. This is a 3 watt 4 ohm loudspeaker. These are some APA106 addressable RGB 8mm LEDs. Those were some surface mount 1 meg ohm resistors. And here we have a USB A to C mail adapter and a USB C to C mail adapter. This is the PAM8302A audio amplifier module. These are some mail to mail DuPont jumper wires. And this is a really cool Makey Makey board, also known as the App Mega 32U4 Touch Input Module. And this is a mini USB cable that I think will go right along with the Makey Makey board. Here we have the very cool HAL 9000 kit PCB. This is the cool HackerBox banner sticker that also has our HAL or SAL sticker we can cut off. And last but certainly not least, our HackerBox 98 collectible reference card. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Did you know you can get custom PCBs made starting at only $5? Unlock the power of precision with PCBWay's PCB assembly services. Seamlessly bring your designs to life with their expert team, offering SMT assembly, through-hole assembly, and mixed assembly options. Experience top-tier quality with their state-of-the-art equipment and rigorous quality control processes. Whether it's prototypes or production runs, they've got you covered. Elevate your projects with PCBWay, where excellence meets comprehensive assembly solutions. As they always do with each hacker box they release, they have a great online guide that is available via Instructables. There'll be a link in the description. Even if you don't have the kit, I would advise checking it out. It's always chock full of great resources and links. We'll be following along with this as we work through the contents of our box. Okay, so let's get started on the HAL 9000 kit. Now, if you're not familiar with HAL, HAL is a character, it's a computer, in the 1968 Stanley Kubrick film, 2001, which is based on writings from Arthur C. Clarke. It's a very cool story. It's a very interesting character, especially for the year it came out. Think about that for a minute. But I don't want to ruin it here. It's very cool. I would uh, recommend checking out the movie if you never have before. One neat thing I can remember hearing on multiple occasions growing up was that the HAL for HAL was a reference to IBM because if you shift the letters back one from IBM, you get H-A-L. If you look at this though, it's pure coincidence. Arthur C. Clarke stated that it was in no way to be a representation of IBM because they definitely didn't want to tick them off because IBM was actually a big help to them in the production of the movie. Anyway, there's tons of great resources out there about it. There's a lot of them in the Instructable. So check it out, Google for it, look it for YouTube clips, and like I said again, check out the movie if you never have. It's pretty cool. And also the uh, sequel to that is uh, 2010, The Year We Made Contact. It's also kind of neat. And that's where you see Sal 9000. For this, we'll be using the HAL PCB, picking one of our stickers, RGB LED, the JAL 2040, the amplifier module, a couple of resistors, and the speaker. Also a little bit of wire to connect the speaker. The Instructable advises us before doing anything else to connect up our Zhao 2040 to the computer. So we're going to use the supplied USB-C cable to do that. And you can see here how the colors are cycling as expected according to the Instructable. Next, as instructed, I downloaded the latest CircuitPython UF2 from the link provided. I then held down the boot button on the 2040 while plugging it into the computer. I copied the unzip UF2 file over into this drive that popped up that updates the firmware of the device. Once that completes, it kind of goes away, reboots, and comes back with the newly installed CircuitPython. 
I verified that the drive name changed and I looked at the code.py that was on there, but it was real basic one liner, just said hello world. So then I grabbed this one, which is what I thought that it really wanted us to have and just converted it to raw and copied and pasted it into Thani, which is a GUI I already had installed for messing with MicroPython. So I just decided to keep using that. Our code.py has references to two libraries that we need to get. There's a link in the instructable that shows us where to get those. I followed that link, got the correct file, and put the two libraries in question into the lib folder on the RP2040 Zhao board. With the libraries in place and saved and the Zhao board rebooted, the LED did blink red as expected. Then the pixels.field numbers were changed around as specified in the instructable, and that was pushed to the board, it was rebooted, and it blinked blue as expected. Now with that micro and the circuit python all verified and working as expected we can start working on putting this thing together and the first thing we're going to solder up is we're going to jump this ground a point right here next it was time for these two little surface mount one meg resistors and i did that by putting a little bit of solder on one side of each of those positions and then coming back and holding the resistors with tweezers to tack the first side down. After that, the other sides were no sweat. Next, I soldered on the amplifier module, but I'm gonna have to apologize because that footage did not get captured or got corrupt or something. Basically, like the instructable tells us here, I put some little dots of solder on the pads first, then I laid the module down on top of it and kind of added a little solder from each hole from the top down through to kind of join together and hold it in place and that ended up looking kind of like this and it seemed okay. Next it was time to solder the Zhao module down. I used a little bit of flux on the pads first, kind of tacked some corners and then soldered the rest of it in place. Next the RGB LED goes in but made a special note to follow the instructions so the flat part of the LED would go to the left of the how board if it were sitting in its normal orientation. Next, I soldered into place, but the pins were kind of tight, so I soldered the first two outside pins, and then I clipped all the leads off, and then I soldered the two inside pins. Next, I held the speaker into place while I applied some hot glue to the top and bottom. I selected the top and bottom instead of the sides, so I wouldn't have to worry about any glue squeezing through those speaker grill holes. Then I used some speaker wire from my stash and connected the amplifier to the speaker and soldered those connections. Then it was time for me to decide if this was going to be HAL 9000 or SAL 9000. Of course, I had to pick HAL 9000 and cut it out the best I could and then try to apply it the best I could. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for me and I knew I'd make a mess of things if I tried to move it around. Now it was finally time to program this thing. I followed the links in the instructable and downloaded the how9000.py file and the mp3 file. I then copied both of these files over to the Zhao board. I then renamed my original code.py file. After that, I renamed my how9000.py file to be code.py so that it would auto execute when the Zhao board boots up. Let's give it a test and see if it works. I then tried making my own custom HAL 9000 MP3 file, but didn't have much luck. I tried a bunch of different MP3 settings and low bit rate and that kind of thing, but I couldn't get it much better than this, but I'll keep working on it. Open the pod bay doors, HAL. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. Okay, now it's time to check out the ESP32 S2 Mini. Following the instructable, we go to Tools Board ESP32 and select Lowland S2 Mini within the Arduino IDE. Now check this out where I'm going to look and see if I see the serial port that this is on. All I see is COM3 and I know from experience with this machine that that's just a built-in port and that's not the port of the microcontroller that I'm hooking up here. And this is showing like this even though currently when I took this capture I had the board plugged in. If you've not messed with one of these type of boards before it may be easy to gloss over this instruction but let's look at this and see what it says. 
Notice that it shows a sequence here where you hold down the zero button on the board, press and release the reset button, and then release the zero button. And that puts it into that mode where it can show up and you can push code to it. Well, I did something slightly different. I just held down reset while I plugged it in, which gives you the same end result. But that's what I'm doing here. So I'll see it show up. In this instance, you can see where now it shows up as COM7. So I was able to select that port and that put me in the position to be able to push code to it. Moving forward with the instructable, we followed along where it said to open the file example basics blink and open that sketch up and pushed it to the controller. And we saw the LED blinking as expected, so that was a good test. The next test the instructable has us do helps us verify the wireless is working okay on the module. And we do that by going to file example, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi scan and opening that sketch. And we push that to the ESP32. That compiles and then when it is running, if it's working properly, you should see a list of SSIDs and things and their signal strength levels that are in the vicinity of your module. And if you see that, that is a good indicator to let you know that the wireless is working okay. Now after these two tests in the instructable, it just kind of has a link here to this super Wi-Fi duck. So, and it doesn't really say anything else. But reading between the lines and checking out the link, we can see that this looks like a pretty cool little wireless bad USB and a pretty nice compact package. And please, for the love of Pete, should you decide to build one of these and put the software on it, please, please, please only use it on systems that you are authorized to do so on. Do not mess with stuff that's not yours. Now, I'm not going to get super detailed here on exactly what I did, but essentially you can see here it says it wants platform I.O. And basically the best way I'm assuming most people use that is through VS Code. So you need VS Code. And then you need to go and install platform IO if you don't have that. And in my case, like this is a Windows box, so I went and installed Git for Windows. Once you have all those pieces, you can go grab this project and kind of unzip it up under where platform IO stores its projects. Then you can build it and push it to your device. And remember, you may need to hold down that zero key to get it to show up so you can push it to it from VS Code. And don't worry if you see this uh, failed message at the end, that's just basically saying, you know, it couldn't reset it. So if you manually reset it by hitting the reset button, or like in this case, unplugging and plugging it back up and everything's okay, you should see the SSID show up like this. Then all you have to do is use the password Wi-Fi duck, all lowercase, to connect to your SSID, Wi-Fi duck, all lowercase. Then you want to open your browser and go to uh, wifi.duck or 192.168. 4.1 once you've got this interface up and you're plugged into the usb port you know of your target or test computer however you want to think of it it's just like another keyboard so you can type what you want in here and send it to the machine and it'll just pop up there's some good resources out there that show you the syntax and some example things to do. You can do some pretty nasty things with this. I'm just going to show you a basic example where we're going to pop up Notepad with some text in it here. You can see that worked perfectly. And I just did something simple. You can imagine anything you can do at a keyboard, you could do with this. So there's some bad things you can do. So I will please ask you again not to be doing any shenanigan stuff with this unless you have permission to do so. But speaking of shenanigans, I wonder how in corporate IT is something like this watch for? Because it just looks like another USB keyboard. Is there some kind of ID you look for or another way to fingerprint this? I'm wondering if the IT security professionals out there could tell me. Or is it just a normal thing where like the majority of your corporate PCs aren't going to have dual keyboards and so that would be something you'd flag on. Now let's check out this Makey Makey board. I've been wanting to play with one of these since I first saw them come out years and years ago. This board uses an AppMega 32U4 and has a real easy way to interface with it by making it super easy to use alligator clips to interact in a variety of ways. And it really just looks like a keyboard as far as the computer is concerned, which makes it super cool to, to work with. But the Makey Makey firmware on the device is just makes it a real approachable physical computing thing, especially for kids, young and old alike. Just something fun to play with and real easy. And if you want to use it like a regular microcontroller for a normal project, all you got to do is just pop in the Arduino IDE and code whatever you want to, and you can just use it in a general sense, but you don't have to, you can use it as it is. 
Huge props go out to Jay Silver and Eric Rosenbaum, who came up with the Makey Makey while graduate students at MIT. So now we're going to continue on with the Instructable and plug in the Makey Makey to the computer using this applied USB cable. Then we're going to get into the Arduino IDE and select Tools, Board, Arduino AVR Boards, and select Arduino Leonardo. And then under Tools and Port, we're going to select the port that this one showed up as. Then we're going to go to File, Example, Basics, Blink. We're going to open that example sketch up. And then all the places where it says LED underscore built in, we're going to change that to the number 17 in all three locations. Then we're going to send that code to the device and observe what we see there. As expected, according to the information in the instructable, we're seeing the LEDs that are adjacent to the mouse icons blink together. So that looks like it worked. Then I went back in the code and changed all those 17s to be 30s. And as you can see here, as expected, the LED adjacent to the keyboard icons are flashing. So that's working great. I was itching to try this in its original intended use format as a Makey Makey. So I followed the link and grabbed the original Makey Makey sketch and cut and pasted that as a new sketch in my local Arduino IDE. And then I went back and grabbed the settings file that you also need to make this work and put that in the proper place. Then I compiled it and sent it to the Makey Makey board. And then I went to looking for some apps. They've got a ton of fun, easy to use apps on their website at Makey Makey. But I looked for something, the simple piano. Now I don't have any bananas handy, but check this out and you can see how I was able to play around a little bit just using the alligator clip as an example. That is pretty darn fun. I can't wait to play with this some with my kids. This was another great hacker box. I had a blast with it. I got to play with a thing that uh, I'd always thought about getting but never did and here it was again as a surprise. So if uh, this is a box that looks like it might interest you as of the time of recording here, it looks like it's still in stock. If this one doesn't strike your fancy, check out some of their other stuff. You may find something that you like. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye bye.